Los Angeles. With their ace dealing, the Yankees battle the Red Sox for the final wild card spot in the AL. That race is heating up, and the National League is scorching. A quick turnaround with Tess Saquon Barkley. What will it take for him to be ready Thursday night? The week two outlook and best bets from Daily Wager. And the future at USC. Who are the Trojans targeting to return the program to its former glory? On Sports Center. Yeah, take good care of that. <laughs> yeah, you got the ball. You ain't nobody saying nothing that's not a fact. We old as hell, Steve. We, you, you, you know that. He ain't lying. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show along with Ashley Brewer of Stan Verrett. More on those old Lakers coming up. We got less than three weeks left in Major League Baseball's regular season, and the wild card race is as close as ever. Entering Tuesday, the Blue Jays led by a game in the AL. Red Sox and Yankees were tied for the second spot, and the Mariners and Athletics were right behind them. And you know who's young? Toronto. And this Toronto current starting lineup lately yeah. is like facing a Tom Brady-led team in the postseason. Downright scary. You don't want to do, do it. Do it. Uh, but somehow, the Rays were able to figure him out on Tuesday. And Tampa's trying to get back in the World Series this year. They've got a nine-game lead over Toronto in the AL East, but... Uh, Toronto's got a guy named Vladdy G. Top of two, G-Man Choi is like, hey, I can hit homers too. Taking Jose Barrios deep. See ya. 437 feet on that shot. Choi, little hip bump and a little kiss for the bat. I love you, bro. Rays take a one nothing lead. Net Blue Jays, I told you they were scary. They're hitting 331 as a team in September. That leads the majors, obviously. Bottom of four. And uh, Vlad Guerrero Jr. Margot. Gets a line out to Manuel Gar Mo Margot. Uh, Beau Bichette, I call him Flo Bichette. Can't him. get that one. Bell Chases the slider, we got two, two outs. Spanish. Next batter, Teoscar Hernandez. Same spot, up the middle, the Margot, center. nice to see ya, thank you. Manuel so Rasmussen Margot. getting out of the jam, Blue Jays cannot score in the fourth. We move to the seventh, Barrios still out there, wheeling and dealing. Yanni Diaz, he'll bloop one to the right side. Marcus and Simeon coming through. I don't make the decisions on top plays, but like, if someone's watching, can you put that in there? Barrios is loving it. He went seven innings pitch, four hits, one earned run on 87 pitches. He did leave with a little left ab tightness. Now to top of eight. Brandon Lau, yeah, get out. Taking Tim Meza deep. That one's so gone. Lau with 34 on the season. Now the Rays go on to win two to nothing. So Toronto, just three hits on Tuesday. They were shut out for just the third time all season, slowing what had been a historic September up until Tuesday. In their first 13 games in September, the Blue Jays compiled a 331 batting average and hit 36 home runs, the only team in MLB history to put up those kind of numbers in a 13-game stretch. Yankees playing power ball in Baltimore against the Orioles. They can use it. Two and eight since September 4th. Worst in the majors during that span. They held, they still held on to the second wild card spot entering Tuesday. Garrett Cole going for them. Bases loaded jam in the bottom of the first. Gets Ramon Urias with a nasty knuckle curve, so he's out of trouble there. About to run support. Aaron Judge off Alexander Wells. Two run shot, 34th of the year, ninth of the season against Baltimore. Yankees up 2 0. There would be more. Top of the third, Giancarlo Stanton at the plate. And that one's gone. Muscled it out. Two run shot is 28th of the year. Seventh time this season, Stanton and Judge have homered in the same game. Yankees up 4 0. They would tack on one more after a Luke Voigt home run. Joey Gallo, DJ LeMahieu also went deep. Yankees 13 0 and scoring five or more runs for Cole. Bottom of the third, two outs against Anthony Santander. Looking more like himself after that rough first inning. On to the fourth, Austin Hayes. Got him with a slider. Still in the fourth, Pedro Severino. Fourth consecutive inning, Cole ended with a strikeout. Fifth inning now. Run already in, runners on first and second. Facing DJ Stewart, 108th pitch of the night. Woo. Fifth straight inning, and it ends in a K. He finishes with seven strikeouts, five innings, four hits, one run. Yankees, 7-2. The Red Sox entered Tuesday in a virtual tie with the Yankees for the second AL wildcard spot. Seattle just two games back. We told you guys it was close. Top of four, J.D. Martinez trying to not keep it close. Watch him take this ball to center and out, taking Tyler Anderson deep. Now, the Red Sox are actually 19-3 this season in games when Martinez has homered, so keep that in the back of your mind. 
Bottom of four, tied at one, two on Abraham Toro. Toro going, and Hunter Renfro, uh-oh, couldn't hold on to that one. So everyone's safe. Renfro's like, what happened? Nathan Avaldi's like, yeah, what happened? So the bases are loaded. The Mariners would then make it 2 1 on a sack fly. Top of six. Bobby Dalback. Good to see you. I covered him in college when we called him Big Bob the Heartthrob. Hi, Bobby. I'm still calling you that on Sports Center. Oh, they're going to love that one in the oh, clubhouse. Yep. What's up, Bobby? Okay, top of eight. Xander Bogarts. Line drive off Joe Smith, Mitch Hanniger. Woo! Off the wall, Bogarts. Racing to third, going, going, and I need to sleep for 12 hours. Bogarts laying that pillow down, and later in the inning, we got the bases loaded. Kyle Schwarber off the end of his bat. Oh, a beautiful hit. Everybody comes home. Everybody going out. Schwarber would sell in the third, and thank you. The Red Sox take an 8-2 lead on that one. 8-4 would be your final. All right, what about the athletics? Bob Melvin's facing the mathematical reality. He said we're going to have to run off some series in a row or some games in a row. A's taking on the Royals in Kansas City, and Josh Harris has got that look in his eye. With the bases loaded, making the most of his opportunity. Two runs score, that's off Jackson Kowar, who had a nightmare of a first inning. Five runs on three hits, four walks, and a wild pitch. He was done after the first. Bottom six, Royals will cut it to seven, four, two on one out. Nicky Lopez, Tony Kemp, that close to making a great grab, but he didn't. And Kyle Isbell scores, Royals cut it to 7-5. Next batter is Salvador Perez, his manager, Mike Matheny said, this guy lives for these moments. No doubt about that one. Number 43 for Perez. He also had four RBI, giving him 109 for the season. That's tops in the majors. Royals up 8-7. We go seventh inning now. One on, one out for Isbell. Oh, Sergio Romo. A moment he'll never forget. His first major league home run. Check out the trot. Two run shot for Isbell. Royals going to win at 10-7. Three straight losses for the A's at a really bad time. All right, so this thing just keeps getting wilder. We've got three different AL East teams in a virtual tie for the two wild card spots. Two AL West teams, the Mariners and A's, are a little behind the pack, but they still got time to close the gap. It's worth noting that Boston has the easiest remaining strength of schedule in the American League. Now to the NFL, the Washington football team didn't just lose their season opener, they lost their quarterback in the process. Ryan Fitzpatrick suffered a partial dislocation of his right hip. He is placed on injured reserve, and he'll miss at least three weeks. So, that guy right there, Taylor Heineke, he'll be taking over as starting quarterback, and he will be starting in a divisional matchup against the New York Giants on Thursday night. And here's what he thinks about that. And it's something I've been dreaming out my whole, dreaming about my whole life, uh, being a starting quarterback in the NFL. And um, you know, here, here we are. So um, I, I really try and take it one day at a time, uh, one meeting at a time, one play at a time. Um, I feel like if I just live in the moment, um, everything else will take care of itself. I don't try and get too ahead of myself. Um, so again, you know, when we're at practice, I just listen to play, remember what we talked about in meetings, what we, what we're trying to get accomplished, and really take it one play at a time and. You know, we'll worry about the other stuff later. Now, Washington has had some dependability issues at the quarterback position. Since 2019, they're the only team with seven different starting quarterbacks. That includes the playoffs. But I have some good news for you. Yeah. Two quarterbacks with the best QBRs over that span are still healthy and on the roster. Their names are Taylor Heineke and Kyle Allen. Washington facing the Giants. Saquon Barkley played 29 of 61 offensive snaps for the Giants Sunday in their loss to the Broncos as New York manages his workload as he returns from a knee injury. He said Monday he felt the usual soreness he feels after a game. His longest gain on 11 touches was five yards. He says the short week isn't ideal, but he's still capable of making big plays. I feel like the warming up and all that stuff will definitely indicate it because in here you can't really, you're not really running full speed um, just with the nature of the short week. Uh, so, you know, just keep the communication with the doctors and the trainers and, and listen to them. But definitely when I'm able to start moving around a little bit more, see how my body feels and see how my body reacts. He changes the offense when he's on the field. He averages a full yard more per touch than other Giants backs. And he's yet to lose a fumble in his career. Since 2018, his 644 touches without losing a fumble are the most by any running back in the NFL. Keep it high and tight. 
All right, ahead on Sports Center from Los Angeles, we'll check in with our friends in Vegas. Daily Wager, who's the best bet in week two? The answer is ahead. And the season's winding down, but the race for the NL wild card is just starting to heat up, which teams made a move on Tuesday. And John Wall is on his way out of Houston. Carmelo said it is NBA championship or bust for the LA Lakers. It's all coming up on SportsCenter LA.